the day had finally come. I had dreamt of this for six years. I'm embedded as an onboard reporter for the 2017-2018 Volvo Ocean Race. This around the world race takes place just once every three years, and it's considered one of the longest and toughest professional sporting events in the world. Leg one was about to begin. We were sailing from Alicante, Spain, 1,450,000 nautical miles to Lisbon, Portugal. Picture a wild setting with hundreds of spectator boats and seven offshore racing yachts all waiting for the start line. I was on board a boat called Turn the Tide on Plastic. I was positioned near the skipper next to the helm. The start gun sounded and we were off like lightning, sailing at about 15 knots. Sorry, I'm just remembering this is such a crazy moment. Um, we were we had rounded all but one of the inshore racing uh, buoys and we're heading to the last one before we headed offshore and left the spectator boats behind. The energy on board was awesome. You could feel it with the crew. I was taking still photos, but I could sense something was wrong. The energy changed and everybody started yelling. I couldn't tell what was going on. I switched to video to start recording what was happening. Time stood still as we fed the needle between the spectator boats and, and sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, this is just such a crazy moment. Um, our, our path had narrowed so much because some of the spectator boats had come into the racing course and we were, about, we were trying to figure out if we were gonna hit the spectator boats or the competitor boats. And if you listen in the video, you can hear me squeal. The touch of... Oh, close. telling you what to do, but you. I was one of 10 onboard reporters for the Volvo Ocean Race. As an OBR, we were designated to specific boats to live on board the boats 24 hours a day, documenting the sailors' journeys, eating, sleeping, everything the sailors were doing. As you can imagine in a nine month race, there's a lot of stories to tell. I'm gonna share one moment with you. Here in this photo, we're sailing in the Southern Ocean, one of the toughest legs of the race, from Cape Town, South Africa, to Melbourne. In these conditions, we're always clipped in. While the sailors are trying to keep the boat on track, we're trying to document the story, and everyone is trying to hold on. In conditions like these, you can imagine, you know, that's hard to do all the time. And things can go south in an instant if you're not. I was down below, um, just helping the crew. I was sitting down, had my hands up, just helping the crew just transfer food from a bag. We went and bowed down into a wave, everyone flew forward, and I went head first into the wall. My face tells the weather now. I have nerve damage around my right eye, but that just reminds me how lucky I am, because I could have broken my neck. And this was Christmas last year. So how did I get here? I went to Creighton University originally to study medicine. That didn't work out too well. <laughs> Tried business, that didn't work out either. I eventually settled into graphic design and visual journalism. When I graduated, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do yet, so I gave myself the gift of time. Rather than backpacking through Europe, I decided to conquer my lifelong fear of the ocean. So I gifted myself with a 60-day outward bound course. Half the trip was sea kayaking, surfing, climbing, uh, wilderness first aid, and 
um, service work. The other half was living on board a tall ship for 30 days. I conquered my fear of the ocean, but something much bigger happened. I found my muse, photography. Here the ship is docked in Trinidad, which was our halfway point. And we had been sailing for about five to six days, so the crew was ready to get off the ship. They let us go on shore, and a few went to the local soccer field to start playing a game. I pulled out my camera and started shooting. And the craziest thing happened. I don't, this is when digital cameras were first around, and I started taking photos, and the kids started noticing. So they rushed over to me, and they started looking. They wanted to see themselves in the camera. And I realized I don't think they'd ever seen that before. I don't have any photos from this moment. I lost them all. But I'll never forget the way that it made me feel. I returned back to the ship, and I remember sitting there, just trying to take it all in. It was nighttime, everyone was sleeping. I was sitting on deck. I could hear the cokey frogs chirping and the sound of my captain playing sea shanties on her guitar below. It was like a movie. I remember that moment because it reminded, it just, it was so euphoric that it just, it was the moment I decided this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to tell people stories. And also, it was the moment that I, I, I was so content that I just wanted to re remember it. So I got a tattoo on my wrist that says lit. And because that's the day that I dove into my life. I knew I needed some, more, some photography training, so I went to Brooks Institute in Ventura, California. I also, sung, I also ended up getting an internship at the Ventura County Star. And one of my assignments that I was given was to document 16-year-old Zach Sunderland. Zach was a local kid who was preparing to be the youngest kid to sail around the world solo at the time, trying to go for the, the world record. I was also taking classes, and one of my assignments was to pitch a story to document for the next two months. So naturally, I pitched the story. As I was working on the story, I ended up meeting the documentary crew who was going to be following Zach for the next year. They said they might need a still photographer to go on to go with them. They asked me if I had a portfolio and if I was interested. I said yes, but I didn't have a portfolio. <laughs> and I was still in the middle of classes. Um, recently at that time, also a professional photographer named Eric Thayer, now a good friend of mine, had just presented at Brooks. And I called him right away and I said, hey, can you please help me put together a portfolio? I don't know what I'm doing. So he met me at Starbucks, we put it together, and I got the job. <laughs> the other crazy thing is I, I was taking classes at the time and I was spreading myself too thin. And it became apparent to me when one of my instructors gave me a pretty harsh critique, looking at my photo saying, my 13 year old daughter could have shot that. That was after shooting one round of Zach's photos and he's like, you know, you need to wow me. He's like, you need to, you know, withdraw. Basically we decided to withdraw from school. He's like, you need to wow me. And, uh, it, he kind of scared the crap out of me. Um, but he said, this is your ticket. Like, you don't need school anymore. This is it. This is your story. So go after it. So Zach's stop, next stop was the Marshall Islands. And the interesting thing about this story is we weren't allowed to be on board while he was sailing. And this was before GoPro time. So trying to figure out how to photograph him was difficult. And the only time we really had a thing was on shore. We, we had many challenging stops along the way, and one of the more challenging ones was Dar Darwin, Australia. Zach was, um, I think he do light winds and current, he was struggling to make it in, and I had arrived about a week before, um, and was in danger of not getting any photos. I had also uh, uh, enrolled myself in an adventure photography workshop at the Summit Workshops. And I was struggling because I thought, you know, I really need the story, but I, my gut was telling me I really needed this workshop because I was still learning. I was still a student. Um, so, in danger of not getting any photos, I hired a plane to fly over Zach. And due to the plane size and the fuel tank, we would have three runs around him, and then that was it. I've never shot from a plane before. I was pretty nervous. But it worked, and this is my $1,100 shot. <laughs> that saved my butt, because this was the only time in the story that we had to do a shot like this. 
I ended up attending the workshop, and this workshop has been my main education for the last 10 years. My primary source of education, my community, my peer group, it's been amazing. And it gave me the confidence to leave school and pursue this story for the next nine months. It's being, been reinforced in my career over and over that relationships are key. Everyone you meet has a purpose. There are no chance encounters. This is Greg Peterson. He was a delivery skipper and sailing instructor that I met in Cape Town while shooting Zach's story. He was preparing a boat to go to Florida, which would be about six to eight weeks. Zach's next stop was St. Helena Island, which is just off the west coast of South, uh, South Africa. And from there, he was going to Grenada, which would be another six to eight weeks. And it's you know, on the same direction in Florida. This is St. Helena. I arrived in St. Helena about a week before Zach did, and I was walking up the street one day and I ran into Greg. This is the remote, most remote place I've ever been in my life. You can only get here by boat. And I run into Greg Peterson. Naturally, at 11 o'clock in the morning, when you get off the boat, you go for a beer. So we went for a beer. He had two crew members with him, a girl and a guy. Um, and one of the guys, the guy did not want to be on the boat anymore. And they still had to get to Florida. So he's talking to me, what are you up to for the next six to eight weeks? Um, something had happened to me in Cape Town. I wasn't quite ready to go home yet. So I confided in Greg, and we talked and decided to go along with him. So they can't pay you anything, go, you know, but don't cost you anything. Um, you just have to recruit the boat. Keep in mind, I had only sailed 150 foot, foot tall ship, never a small boat. Um, so I had a lot of learning to do. But I said yes and decided to hop on board with him and Jamie. I learned how to sail, and to get out of my thoughts, I documented our journey along the way. I later sold the story to Coastal Living Magazine. A few years later in my career, I was in Venice, Italy, shooting on assignment for Yacht Magazine, and a friend of mine said, hey, I'm gonna be there working the America's Cup event. And I had never shot that before, I didn't know much about it, but said okay. And they said you can stay with us, and I got credentials from Yacht and went to go check it out. I remember sitting in the media center talking to a well-known Yacht photographer. He sized me up and he was like, basically told me I would never make it in the, in the industry. It was a very awkward conversation. <laughs> After spending some time with these boats, I realized there was a shot that I wanted to get. Since I had conquered my fear of the ocean, I like to be in it all the time. There was this shot that I wanted was in the water with the boat sailing over me. I had asked around if it was dangerous and I had mixed reactions. Um, each team had a media coordinator and the, the US team said absolutely not, it's too dangerous. But the French team said, you know, if we don't have enough time here, but if you're gonna be at the next event in Newport, come, you know, come talk to us. I wasn't planning to be there, but I got myself there. So I arrived a week early and they were training and I needed to go talk to the skipper and I don't know any of the people in the industry right now. I walk into the tent and I meet this guy. He's one of the most famous sailors in the world. I have no idea who he is. I walk in and I explain what I want to do and he says, he looks at me, cigarette in hand. Sure, no problem. We'll sail over you, we'll sail by, we'll sail by you. No problem. Come back in an hour. Oh shit. <laughs> This is actually gonna happen. Um, I had my gear in my trunk, luckily. Um, so I grabbed my wetsuit, went over there, and they put me in a small rib and dropped me in the water. I was really lucky that day because the weather, the current was good, the weather was good, and most importantly, the skipper was confident. <laughs> so the first few passes, they sailed to my right, sailed the hole over me. The third one, I realized I'm lined up for them to go directly over me. This is gonna happen. Feel <laughs> cut out, but um, here's the shot. I mean, imagine like riding a bike, so you're riding a bike, trying to stay in one place, trying to take photos, look through the viewfinder, and not get hit by the boat. Because there's, there's a dolphin striker that's to the, that you can't see in the photo, but there's a pretty small space um, if anything went wrong. 
So the team, I allowed the team to share some photos on social media the next day, and in one day, it reached over 100,000 people. It earned me respect among my peers, Sh you know, showed them that I was serious, but also maybe a little crazy. <laughs> and I earned the nickname, the girl with balls. <laughs> A lot changed after that. <laughs> There's a saying, if you want to change something, change something. You can, may not always get you know, unique stories, but you can change the angles of, of what you're shooting. Life is going to throw you curveballs. Sometimes they may be so debilitating that you might lose the desire to push on. Rather than trying to block those hard times out, which doesn't always work. Consider making the decision to own your story. Is there something in your past you'd like to change? There was for me. I called upon that memory to earn my dream job in the Volvo Ocean Race. The application guidelines for the race were to submit five images and a video of ourselves. They wanted to see the creativity and also a door into who we were. My concept was to show what it looks like when we close our eyes, what exists in our minds when we close our eyes. They wanted to see that we could think outside the box. I realized during this time that the hard times, the tough times, were just as important part of my story and who I was as the good ones. And sometimes those are what push you farther and harder. Here's the video. Every day I see you. I feel you. I can't take my eyes off of you. I am mesmerized by your beauty. I am humbled by your strength. It captivates me. I can't stop watching. In you, I see me. When I close my eyes, I see it. Seven years ago, you saved my life. I came to you broken. My body was beaten and my soul was shattered. I was far away from those who could comfort me and I felt so alone. You called to me, surrounding me, allowing me to feel your full embrace. You showed me yourself in many forms. Through your power and fury, I learned to be resilient. Through your energy and strength, I became stronger. Through your beauty, I learned to truly be present, to live in the moment and how quickly things can change. You made me laugh again. We had many days and nights together. You pushed me far outside my comfort zone. Through my fear, I learned to have trust and faith in you. Your ever-changing form taught me to not worry about things I can't control. In the darkness of the night, alone with my thoughts, you helped me transition from a dark place to one of wonderment and inspiration. You taught me that darkness is always present, but that rays of light are always filtering through. You gave me a choice. You can either gaze your perspective upward and use the darkness to illuminate the light shining down or you can keep your gaze down and be lost in the turmoil of the dark waves crashing around you. I remember the day I made my choice because it defines how I see things today. You saved me and you always bring me home. So I'll leave you with a few notes. stories and new ideas are more, more likely to come when you change your environment. Take a chance. Change something. Stay awake. Follow your ideas. Ask the crazy questions. Put yourself in, in places, what are, sorry, put yourself in places that create opportunities. This is the biggest one. Make your tribe, realize your friendships when you make them, and nurture the hell out of them. 
Trust that everything you've experienced creates a unique story of you. No one, sorry, no one has walked your exact path. No one will see things the way that you do. Let these differences inform who you are and what you create. Thank you. Thank you.